Hello, I'm Martin Sheen, and welcome to Cure Off by Night, Superior Wisconsin's number one late night comedy show. And now, here's your host, Andrew Kiroff. to do our first ever show here at the Underground right here in Duluth, Minnesota. I know Martin Sheen said Superior, Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, schedule Martin Sheen. <laughs> record these things. <laughs> Not as tough as this to schedule the Chancellor. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody gets that joke. I understand that. Uh, anyway, you know it's awkward for me to cue you guys to stop now because I have to turn completely around to do that. They used to just be over here and I'm getting used to the new parameters of my space here at the underground, but it's fine. It's a bigger area, actually. I can come over here. I can, come, I can look, I'm so free. I mean, it's so exciting for me. Oh, I'm excited. All right, so the show tonight, we have some sketches that we're going to perform for you guys, some really funny comedy sketches. We've got some comedy videos, as well as live sketches that will accompany that. So that's coming up on the show. Also, we have uh, three guests that are coming on the show tonight. We have Kate Horvath, who is the Education Director for the Duluth Playhouse. Yes! It's exciting. Uh, we will also have Peter Pruitt back on the program from the Lake Superior Zoo. He's coming on. And uh, a folk band all the way here from Birmingham, Alabama. They are called the Bus Buddies. They're going to come on and do an interview, and then they'll perform a song from their upcoming album for you guys tonight. Very excited about that. Yeah, bus buddies. I don't know if you guys are aware of a uh, reality show documentary series right now on Animal Planet. It's called Finding Bigfoot. And uh, what happens during the show uh, are there's, there's these four people, and they go out into the wilderness of various states, and they search for Bigfoot. They try to find if Bigfoot exists in those areas. And we here at Kira by Night, we're, we're very big fans of the show. A lot of our producers are very into the show. And so we made our own version based in the Twin Ports of Finding Big Bird. <laughs> we did. We did. Uh, it's great. Let me tell you. It's, I think it's going to premiere like in the fall, I think. Uh, anyway, this is called Searching for Sasquatch. <laughs> in a time when people doubted their very existence, four people went on a mission into the wilderness to prove their actuality and in the process uncovered one of our nation's deepest and darkest secrets. This is Searching for Sasquatch. Why did I get into Bigfooting? Well, it started I was about seven or eight and it was Christmas and I went to the mall with my parents and to see Santa. And I sat down on Santa's lap and he asked me what I wanted and I looked at him and I said, I would like a unicorn for Christmas. And he looked at me and he goes, what are you, gay? You don't want a unicorn for Christmas. And that didn't sit well with me. So I did some unicorn research and it turns out that most people don't think they're real. I tend to disagree. I haven't seen a unicorn, but it got me into other mythical creatures and the one that really caught my eyes was the Sasquatch. And I just have this feeling deep inside me that Sasquatches are real. It's hard out here. You know, you gotta look out for so many things. We've got mountain lions, bears, bear traps, uh, bear hunters, bear dogs. Now we've got Sasquatches. I went to the zoo one day and I saw a bunch of animals and then it happened that night to see a Bigfoot in the backyard. I always wondered what would it be like if I ever had a pet Bigfoot, so... I joined this here organization so that I can eventually capture one and maybe get myself a baby Bigfoot. So, basically I got in BFRO because just looking around and saw some promo for the first meeting. Said they'd have some free pizza there, so I'm like, what the hell, I'll believe in Bigfoot for some free pizza. So I started getting into it, doing my research, 
And I realized me and Bigfoot, we have a lot in common. Like, uh, both like free pizza. You can't go wrong there. Um, some other things we have in common. Both like Burt Reynolds, I found out. It's in, it's in Canadian, I can't even read it. Canadian um, is not a language, Richard. No, Canadian, it's a very um, old language. See, no, look right there. No. Can you even read that? That's Canadian. So mainly why I joined is because someone needs to be the voice of reason with all these guys, because Bigfoot is not real. I don't know how anyone can think that he is real. And Sasquatches like to use these big open areas for their fiestas and whatnot. It would also be very easy for them to stick their claws into your abdomen rip out your liver, eat it, and then eat your stomach and all your intestines too. We're just gonna look around because even these bookshelves will give a good, um, a hiding place for Sasquatch. Sasquatches prey on single women in the forest. Yeah. Um, Canadians are very well known for their, um, their experience with the Bigfoot creatures themselves. Um, it's said that they used to live in peace with Bigfoot. Now they come up here for a few reasons. They like to eat the buds on the tree branches. Good source of vitamin F. I see something here. This this microphone. Look at this. This is probably about the size of uh, a Bigfoot genitalia, if you will. Um, a dick. Mini van just pissed the hell out of him. You found a Squatch Village. See? Right there too. Yep, another one. Just, yep. like, just like gorillas. They Look will at get this together area. in a family and lay in a bed for safety at night. Anything from you? I saw it. Uh, and where did you see it and could you describe in detail, please? Well, I was walking my dog, Skip, like the peanut butter, and we was walking through the forest and I heard something yell at me. I'm like, shut up thing, but it was still all, ah, and I'm like, what is that? Ah. And then I looked around and I saw it. It was just humping a tree. Because I know they're close. I'm going to make as many calls as loud as possible in as short of a time as possible. So... Coming this fall to UWS. Hello, I'm Martin Sheen. In a time of worldly innovation, the far most reaches of society boomed with cultural and artistic achievement. The spirits of tradition and normalcy were shattered with the forthcoming of technological advancement. These are the tales of the roaring 1420s. <laughs> I have just invented the precursor to modern day Christmas pudding. <laughs> and that was the roaring 1420s, a decade worth remembering, I suppose. All right, everybody, welcome back to Cure Up Night. I hope you enjoyed those last couple sketches we just performed for you. That, of course, the Roaring 1420s, one of the most important decades in human history. Uh, Martin Sheen thinks so. So, I would like to welcome my first guest. She is the entertainment director at the Duluth Playhouse. Please welcome to the program, Kate Horvath. <laughs> Welcome to Cure Up by Night, Kate. Thanks for having me. Uh, we are really glad to have you on the show. You're the first ever guest that we have here at the Underground. <laughs> so you can, I guess, brag your friends about that, whatever. I already did. I tweeted it already. And awesome. Funny, so. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so you are uh, the entertainment, or not, the, the education director. I'm sorry. I used to have a position called the entertainment director. So I didn't do that. But the uh, education director at the Duke Playhouse. And so what, uh, what exactly do you do? Well, um, I oversee all of the educational programming for the Playhouse, including our 
our children's theater classes and adult classes at the gym program, and our children's theater, which provides three main stage performance opportunities for kids, and then we do three to four performance intensives during the summer. Okay. So, so what do you have upcoming now uh, with those classes? On Monday, we start our week-long summer camp session. So we'll produce 12 week-long camp sessions during the next two months, in addition to an Andy Jr. performance intensives and um, Mary Zimmerman's Metamorphoses and Musical Threes for our very talented and advanced teenage students. Wow, that's a lot of things. It is a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. So how many, like, what are the age groups that you have? Um, we start at age five, so basically K through 12 is the educational, you know, age demographic we're looking to focus on. But like I said, we also have adult programming, um, we have senior study classes, private vocal study, piano lessons, all that kind of stuff. Wow, that is, that's a lot of stuff you have. <laughs> uh, did you know that I was once in a uh, Duluth Playhouse Children's show. Really? Way back in the day. I think I did one of your uh, sessions in the summer. Okay. And uh, I was in Cinderella. Mm -hmm. And I was the town crier. And what happened, yeah, and so what happened in it was I'd go out there and something would happen to me where I would get injured and then I would cry. <laughs> so I would cry. That's what, you know, C R Y E R. Sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like John prior to two and a half years. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so uh, so so in the summer you have all these different shows going on, and so are there just kind of one performance where you can see each one of these performances? Yep, on Friday of their camp week, the kids will yeah. perform. They're actually performing in our new underground space. Nice. Um, they'll perform for their parents. So it's about a 15, 20 minute original um, production based on either popular children's literature or other fun themes. Like we have an Angry Birds camp this summer based on the video game. It's going to be awesome. We'll be slingshotting little people as birds across the stage. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Will they like destroy structures? and? I think we'll, we'll paint some really super awesome cardboard boxes so with like right. bricks and they'll just kablam. Right Boom. Yeah, they'll blow them up and off. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Angry Birds. Me too. So uh, right now I know uh, upstairs uh, in the, the Playhouse main stage, uh, God of Carnage is going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, that runs through next weekend? It does. Okay. And so what exactly is God of Carnage? Oh, God of Carnage is just this awesome script. It is really tight, four person, really intense, both um, as comedy, but with a very dramatic edge to it. Two couples who are coming to terms with the fact that one child, one of their kids has bullied the other and knocked out a couple teeth. And so they're attempting to have this very like civil, like progressive, evolved conversation about the violence between these two young children. And then they themselves devolve into drunkenness, name calling, vomit, you name it, it's great. <laughs> so um, hijinks ensue. There's uh, a lot of kind of physical comedy, really great dialogue, really tight script. Um, I think our audience are really going to enjoy something new and fresh. Great, yeah. Uh, that sounds something I, I probably, I might check out. I will. Uh, yeah, I know. Be fun. <laughs> so, so what else, what are the other shows that are upcoming now for the Duluth Playhouse? Um, we have Adita coming up as our summer blockbuster musical. That will take the stage in July. And then after that, like I mentioned, the um, our teen intensive will perform Metamorphoses Complete with Cool and Grease the Musical in August. And then we start our new season in September uh, with Monty Python's Family. So, I love my family. Yes, I love you sure. I, yes. <laughs> um, so that musical will take the stage in September and we'll also have Collected Stories, which is um, a really intense two person drama down here in the underground in September, too. Wow. Um, this season will be our sailing into Centennial. The Playhouse is almost 100 years old. We're turning 100 next season. And so we'll have a whole awesome life for shows coming up. Nice. So, uh, because now we have the, the underground space, it just opened. Uh, uh, so, are part of your season is part of your season now going to be in the underground? Well, the underground functions much like the Playhouse's second stage. Mm -hmm. So we will produce um, keystone slots down here in the underground. But also, the underground is meant to be a home for emerging artists. Um, we have a wonderful um, director of programming, Crystal Pelkey, who helps coordinate your events this evening. She's got an incredible lineup of activities all throughout. Um, the summer, and then we'll, she's piloting that, and then in the fall we'll be launching to a full season of activities too, which will be really cool. That sounds great. That sounds great. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to add over here? Uh, thanks Anybody for coming. Thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs> All right, Kate Horvath, everybody. <laughs>
Everybody, now that we're doing the show in this great state of Minnesota, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of uh, a phrase that describes people from this state, Minnesota nice. Okay? It's, it's the idea that people in Minnesota are just a little bit nicer, a little more friendly than people in other regions and other places. And so we wanted to test to see if that saying, that idea, Minnesota nice, really applies to people of all walks of life in Minnesota. Okay. So uh, we explore that in this next live sketch. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, these are the Minnesota hookers. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That was the Minnesota Hookers. Right here in Cure Up by Night. I don't know how many of you guys are a fan of country music. Anyone out there a fan of country music? Four of you, okay. We just aimed right for the right demographic tonight. So anyway, uh, Cure Up by Night has an exclusive promotional video. All right, there is a, there's a country star out there. She's fast on the rise. She's climbing up the charts. She is said to be the next big thing in Nashville, okay? She is, she is the talk of the town, everybody. Now, some people say she's a little bit like another country artist that's out there, but, but I really don't see it, okay? But anyway, this is a promotional video about her, her upcoming album, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Tyler Quick. Tyler Quick. <laughs> Hi y'all, my name's Tyler Quick. Have you ever been in love? Oh Lord, he knows I have five or seven times a week. Well, you can hear all the love and heartbreak on my past 40 albums now in one convenient set. Here's just a sample of what you'll hear on my new album, Quick to Break Up. I remember when I broke up the first time saying this is it, I haven't had enough Cause like I haven't sold a record in a month When you said I was talented, what? Then I fool around again and say, sales I miss you and I swear I'll make some change Trust me, remember how this way I last a day I said I hate him, we break up, you called it profit Ooh, 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 ooh I wrote more songs for you last night and ooh I'm selling and I'm selling them we are never ever ever gonna last together but I'll never ever ever not just find another you go talk to your friends but my money talks to me I have forever ever ever found a way to sell my records We were both young when I first saw you I close my eyes and PTSD starts I'm standing there In my favorite purple underwear Nice to meet you, we should probably start dating I hope you don't mind mediocre voices and degrading songs About relationships that don't last long uh oh, cause within a week you'll probably piss me off And I will kick you to the curb and call you a jerk off And I will publicly shame you on the radio And I thought maybe it's me and I should just be alone Kidding, it's you and in a bad song you go Hope we're not related, I hate incest I'm indecisive, so I date to excess. Now didn't that just pluck at the guitar of your heart? If you want to order my new collection, Quick to Break Up, just call the number on your screen. It's my personal number. Just please call me. Please. <laughs> Uh, Valtrex commercial, right? The, the genital herpes medication? 
Yeah? Yeah. So when people watch you in the commercial, they're probably going to think that you have genital herpes. Yeah. Well, why would you want that? Well, why would you want that? I mean, I've been dreaming about this moment for months. I mean, I've gone up at 5 a.m. every day, ate seven raw eggs, close to shells, and got on my spin bike just so I can get this part. Why? Well, I, I mean, I, I don't think any of that's going to help you say your lines better. I know, but it, it just gets me so pumped. <laughs> oh, I want it so bad. Don't you? Well, not really. I mean, I'm just doing this because I, I lost my other job. Oh. What'd you do? Well, I, I, I hosted this late night show. <laughs> but it got canceled. I mean, I thought it was pretty funny, but, but nobody laughed. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, you can get this part? Uh, I mean, you, you probably you seem, you seem to really want it now. I so, do. Yeah. Oh, I do. I mean, when I was a little kid, my mom used to tell me I'd be on TV someday saying that I had genital herpes. <laughs> <laughs> really, your, your mom said that? Well, something like that. Right, so she probably said, you're going to be on TV someday. No, she said I was going to have herpes someday. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, she drank. Alcohol? No. But do you really think I'm going to get this far? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you definitely could, man. Uh, cool. So, uh, how did you save it? What? Oh, the line. How, how did you save the line? Oh, oh, yeah, I, I just went in there and said that. Uh, I have genital herpes. <laughs> really? That's it? Yeah, we, I, I didn't want to overact it. Oh, trust me. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> well, how did you say it? Well, I, just, I didn't just give him one. I mean, I gave a medley of herpes. I mean, I do herpes out of for 20 minutes. <laughs> I'll show you. everybody, welcome back to Kirov by Night, live here at the Underground. Uh, our next sketch, uh, this is an ongoing sketch we've done, we've done a few of these at UWS, and uh, it's a recurring thing we'd like to start doing here. Uh, these are called Bad Moments in History. Bad Moments in History. And so these are uh, the exact moment in human history that something major in the world really changed for the worse. Okay? It, it made the world a lot worse after this exact moment. So our first bad moment in history is how uh, African slavery got started. And uh, so ladies and gentlemen, these are Kira and Ike bad moments in history. Damn, I'm sick of these motherfucking lions in this motherfucking village. <laughs> They're corrupting our children, taking our jobs. At least I escaped the one I was chasing. I wish something different would happen. I don't care what it is. <laughs> Who in the fuck are you? <laughs> oh, I'm an American. I come from the land of opportunity, freedom, and equality. Shit. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Do you want a job? Are there any lines? No. Hell yeah! 
Thank you, everybody. I would like to introduce my second guest of the night. He is making his second appearance on Kiran by Night. He is here from the Lake Superior Zoo, and he has a couple of animals he'd like to bring on, as well as talk about some great things that are going on at the zoo. Please give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Peter Pruitt. <laughs> Welcome back on the show, Peter. Why, thank you. You guys are growing up, aren't you? Yeah, we are. We're, uh, we're here now. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It is. It's exciting. We're excited to be here. Uh, so, uh, you're coming on uh, here from the zoo. And so, uh, what, uh, what are some cool stuff that's uh, going on in the zoo now? We've got a real fun event tomorrow. So, we always wait last minute to plug these things. <laughs> Yeah. Tomorrow, on uh, June 8th, we're doing a farm fun and food event. What we did last year, we started renovating our barnyard. And those of you who remember, uh, you used to not be able to get in there and wrestle goats and sheep. So we've all changed that. We've got gates now that work, so you can go in there. And you know, you'll probably have the sheep chase you guys around. But you had that opportunity. <laughs> can, can people really wrestle goats and sheep? Um, not at our zoo, I, I suppose. Right. Somewhere I'm else. sure it happens. There might be yeah. a, there might be a, a show or or some place in a seedy basement that they wrestle sheep. Or we should do that. <laughs> the underground is kind of a seedy basement. Yeah, we, we could probably. <laughs> sell it. You know, and the thing too is we could probably we could probably raise a lot of money for the zoo, right? Yeah. Right. That's on there. Could be a fundraiser. Yeah. 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 Look at that. Uh, tax write off. This is uh, talent, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> have the ideas. So uh, it's called Farm Food and Fun? Farm Food and Fun. The yes. three F's of awesome. The three F's of awesome. Yes. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been walking around and this is an homage to the Trashmen. Do you, have you guys, do you remember the Trashmen? They're actually from Minneapolis and their famous song is the Surfing Bird. Mm -hmm. But we kept walking around yeah. singing the barn, the barn, the barn is the word. Don't you know the barn is the word? <laughs> everybody, barn, barn, barn. Yeah, everybody knows that the barn is the word. Yeah. So, barn, barn, barn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How, how's that for humor? It's pretty, it's pretty good. <laughs> I've never had someone ask me that and I'm so like, how's that for humor? This is like, <laughs> like, hey, yeah. two, two times is it for me. This is, I've done after this. Huh? I don't think so. No, we, we like having you here. You, you bring some, some cool animals and stuff. So. Uh, so what animals exactly do you, All right, uh, have? you what, guys, what's, what's the first animal This here? is going to be Jilly, our okay. bantam coaching chicken. All right? So and this is a special night for her and you guys. Okay. Yesterday she got out of her quarantine. She is absolutely 100% healthy. Okay. And this is her first trip outside the zoo. She's our, our, our new education chicken. Now, so. now, you said she was quarantined. Yes. <laughs> Why is that, and is it safe for her to be here? Yes, it's safe for her to be here. Every animal we bring into the okay. zoo goes through a minimum of 30 days quarantine. Primates do 60, and reptiles go 80 days, 90 days. So we just want to make sure they're safe and healthy before we put them into our collection, our population. Okay. So, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. We're going to let her watch your glass. She okay. The pack. We're going to try this out. All right. I'll... So, coats and chickens are extremely docile and friendly. Okay. And so, this is the reason why we brought Jilly here. Let's see if she comes out. And a coachin, if you look when she steps out, they have feathers all the way down to her feet. Okay. For a normal chicken is going to have bare legs. Yeah. So, so when we think of chickens, just in general, what kind of chickens are we usually thinking? Of? You're going to probably see a batten, bantam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a common. There's some egg laying chickens. Can I, can I touch her? Can I touch her? Yeah. Yeah. Over here, Jilly. Don't jump. Don't what if the chicken gets loose? Have we? We'll catch her. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how. Yeah. You, you certainly can. Yeah. Um, I, I caught worse. I caught a polar bear last year. You remember that? I yeah. I remember that. <laughs> right. That's true. There. There she goes. Whoa. There. So. So um. So, so, so this type of chicken, why, why don't we see uh, these chickens, like, more, are, are these a common type of chicken? They, they are, but these guys aren't big egg layers, they medium-sized eggs, uh -huh. and it's a breed that started back in the <laughs> 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 likes my notebook. They, they, were more, they were more pets. 
Okay. Um, they, were, they, they started the fancy chicken craze. So let's have a fancy chicken in the house. Oh, <laughs> super friendly. Yes. Yeah. Don't there was one. a craze to have a fancy chicken in the yeah. house. <laughs> when did this well, okay. Oh, so I was, I was, uh, oh, do you have worms? I don't have worms. <laughs> I don't think so. Can it detect if I have worms? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Err. What? We'll put her back in her okay. panel in here. You're getting too crazy, Jelly. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is back when everybody had to have a feather in their yeah. hat and all that other good stuff. Did people want fancy chickens so that they could tell if they had worms? Um, <laughs> yes. Back in 1912, yeah. there was no good way to tell if you had worms. So they brought chickens into the house. So they brought chickens into the house. Yes. Okay, so that was cool. Yep. So what is another... All right, the other animal you have on the this show. This one's dangerous. It, it's it's um, it's a rex. Thank you for telling me that now. Yes, yeah. yes, European rabbit. Yeah. Um, bugs. Her housemate Vanicula is actually the one that's the most dangerous. I was painting her exhibit one day, and I don't I don't really do that much anymore. And I reached down, and Vanicula came over and bit my finger. So wow. we we brought bugs instead. Okay. And this is no ordinary rabbit. I should have okay. said that with a Scottish accent for those of you who like my pipe. I do like I've already said on the show that I like my pipe. There you go. We'll bring her out here. She might be a little stage side. Okay. There. There's the bugs. Wow. Right here. Now I won't let her get on the desk because she'll be harder to catch than. <laughs> so we'll just hold her right here. Yeah. So she's a Rex or a European. Rabbit, they started their career off in France. Super docile, extremely intelligent. Okay. So do you know what a female rabbit's called? I do not. A doe. A doe. Like yes. a deer. Like a deer. Can you imagine yeah. what the, the boy's called? Um, a buck. A buck. Now here's the tricky question. What about the babies? Um, I... The line of questioning has thus led me to answer fawn. Right, you would think so, right. but it's a kit or a kitten. They're okay. just trying to mess with us. They're trying to mess with us. <laughs> right. right, all right. So, so yeah, you, you get used to it. And you, 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 yeah. like, I, have, I have baby kittens, and you come over and there's rabbits. Right. Yeah, yeah just to, like, just just to mess with your friends. Like, hey, yeah. you want to see my kitten? And there's a, and it's a, a dangerous rabbit. It's a rabbit. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll put her so, away before she decides to jump off my mat. Okay. And then we'll go chase her. So, so now I, I know because I was backstage right before the show, and, and this was kind of this was kind of bad. But but the chicken, uh, because it, it pooped so much, yeah, it made the whole backstage area smell Smelly. really yes. bad. Yes. So that that was bad for us. Yes, I <laughs> I, I, can, I can give you a, a quick history lesson. Um, I grew up on a farm. Okay. And we didn't raise chickens. We actually raised rabbits. The reason why we didn't raise chickens is because my dad's the youngest in his family, and the first chore you got as a kid was the chicken coop. Mm -hmm. And as you got older, you pass it on to the next sibling. He didn't have anyone to pass it on to. And chicken coops are absolutely horrible. And he said, no more. Mm -hmm. And we had rabbits instead of chickens. But then again, my brother and I came to the rabbit coop out. So. Right. So is a rabbit coop very bad? Nah, not as bad as a chicken coop. Not even close. All right. Yeah. So, so uh, you brought these two animals on, and so this is part of your barnyard exhibit now. Yes. And I know that that was one of the areas that got sort of uh, that got damaged by the flood. Yeah. And so, um, have you sort of rebuilt that whole area now? Well, what happened? The crazy part with the flood in the barnyard, it just kind of lifted the water, lifted up, and it went down. So we didn't really have any structural damage. What we lost was our critters. You know, that was hard enough to replace. And pre-flood, we were already renovating the fence so we can actually get in there. Mm -hmm. And what happened is um, we had a, a tremendous amount of outpouring support and it got to the point where I lost track of how many people wanted to donate animals. You know, wow. I, I mean, it was amazing. And there are people that, and I will apologize because you, you get 15 emails a day, you can't, res I tried, but you can't respond to every one of them. Right. And so, you know, we missed a few, but mm -hmm. you know, we got a full whole barnyard and we actually built a chicken coop. I don't like them, my dad doesn't like them, but we, that's, once again, right. I can who, make who cleans it? Someone else. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I have the, 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 the power now right. to assign someone to clean that other than me. 
Good for you. Ten other people. Yeah. You need to clean that before I touch it. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's what that's what power can do. Yes. Uh, so it's so corrupting. I, huh? it's corrupting. Yes. yes. So I know when you, uh, I did pre interview with you, you're talking about a, a program that's going on uh, to to um, to kind of help prevent monoculture and add biodiversity. Yes. I mean, most people, when we talk about endangered species or threatened species, the Endangered Species Act, you think of these exotic, big, huge, beautiful, wild animals that we don't ever see. But we have the same problem with our domestic breeds, and whether it's livestock or our plants, as, as time moved along, industry took over, and we want to produce the most, the quickest, and the easiest. And so we've lost a lot of these historical and, and heritage breeds, whether they're livestock or plant. You, know, you look at a, a cornfield, that's basically one hybrid all the way across it. All they want to do is maximize the bushels per acre, not necessarily have a variety of plants. And with a um, really neat website, if you go to the American breed, uh, American Livestock Breeds, uh, Conservancy, they will actually have a list of endangered domestic breeds, threatened breeds, ones that are recovering, and other ones that you need to watch. And with our chicken coop, we're actually bringing in, it's a modern, day, modern game chicken. That's a critical breed. It's well on its way to being endangered. Then we have a uh, Lockenbelder, which is threatened. And then, just for fun, I brought in <coughs> silver pencil rocks. Their feathers can be tied into fly lures. So we just thought that would be kind of cool to pick up their feathers and make fly lures and we can go down to Kingsbury Bridge, which is a trout stream and see if we catch them. Right. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. So uh, would you like to add anything else about some programs going on at the zoo? Yeah. Um, come out tomorrow. It's going to be really cool. The farm food and fun. What we've really focused in on is the local community. We, we're bringing in um, vendors and companies that are all local. We've got like locally laid eggs. It, if it goes along with the herpes commercial. <laughs> so, and it's a local company, and um, <laughs> the lady, I suppose, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. And, <laughs> once again, I'm working, so I don't have to come back. Huh? <laughs> no, I don't think, I think okay. you're doing a great job. All we right. always love having you on the show. Yep. Thank you for coming back on you the right. program, Peter. Awesome. Peter Food, everybody. Thank nice you. To you too. <laughs> Peter Food, going to be right back after this. I once had a subscription to the newspaper, but alas, 
Carlos has stolen my newspapers. Oh, no. As well as my alpacas. If I knew where he was, I would think he pay for his actions. He should pay 25 cents a paper. Yes. <laughs> and 25 pesos in alpaca. Yes. Yes. But how? How will you get me back? I must find Carlos first. But where will we find him? I, I hear music. You hear it too? Yes. I thought I was going crazy, but there must actually be music somewhere. Oh. Where will we find people who cannot see music? No, we cannot. Wait. Is this... Has, has he been here the whole time? for your actions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to Cheer Up by Night. Mm, hope you guys enjoyed that. That was improvised. A lot of people don't know that we improvised that one. Um, uh, though it's fairly obvious, I think. Um, <laughs> If someone were to write that script, I would, I would question their sanity. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, my third guest and I were very excited to bring to the program. They are a musical guest. They are a folk band all the way here from Birmingham, Alabama. Now they're going to come on the show, do an interview with me, and then they're going to play a song for you off of their upcoming album. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the Bus Buddies. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming on the show. Yeah, no problem, Andrew. Thank yeah. you so much for having us. How about this? This kid having us on his show? Yeah. Wow. So we're, uh, yes, we, we're very excited to have you guys here. First musical guest here at the Underground. Really? Yes. Wow. Well, it's our first episode, so. Really? Yes. And we're the, wow, that's like a privilege. It is. It's a, that's like one of those privileges. That's one of those privileges. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you, guys are a, uh, you guys are a folk band. Is that correct? <laughs> I also like to hide things in it sometimes. Right. I've never heard of a, a tuba in, in, folk or in folk music. Well, uh, we're kind of reinventing the genre a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, is it folk? Technically, yes, but it has a little, little country western spin on it, I guess. Okay, sure, sure. sure. Heavy metal. That, uh, really? Heavy metal. Yeah. <laughs> heavy metal right there. Grass. Uh, That's so. like 45 bucks in scrap right there. You want scrap? <laughs> I mean, not that we would, because we like to keep things in it. But. Of course, yeah. <laughs> you have right. something on your... Is that part of... You got something like... Like part of a fake mustache. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's weird. Why would that be on I don't know <laughs> why. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, yeah. can, any, can you guys see it out there? Yeah. No. No. It was know. pretty obvious from my angle, but yeah. he's, I'm getting the yeah, good angle. A couple I'm feet. getting a couple good feet angle from here. Me. You're not getting yeah. this good angle. So the front row here is everybody scared something. I don't know. No one sat. I noticed that earlier. Nobody sat in the front row. Holy <laughs> shit, you rat! <laughs> you can see it pretty. Yeah, not that far. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, you guys are from uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. So, 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 what's it like there in Birmingham? Well, it's, well, it's tornado season right now, so it's kind of like look really? out. It's like look out. I, I've never heard of tornadoes in Alabama. There's always tornadoes in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> really? Pretty much. Pretty much. It's like there's a schedule with them. <laughs> Every day at 3 o'clock, there's a tornado. <laughs> well, no. 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Really? 3 a.m., everybody That's... in Alabama's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd be like if, there, if I knew a tornado was coming. It's not funny. It's really not a laugh matter. Right. I shouldn't laugh like that. You're right. So other than the Have tornadoes... you ever been in a tornado? 
I've, I have never been in a, inside a tornado. Then why should we trust anything you have to say regarding tornadoes? <laughs> I haven't said anything regarding tornadoes other than asking about if they are or are not in Alabama. I, your you show up. Two, two of us have been in tornadoes one and a half times? Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's why you get the show and we don't, but okay. I, I, mean, I get it. I okay, get it. sure. So, so what is Birmingham like other than the tornadoes? Well, there's hurricanes. <laughs> it sounds like a like a place I would not want to live. Exactly. That's why we hitchhiked all the way up here to have a little show. Okay. So you hitchhiked all the way from Alabama. Yeah. yeah. How long you don't have, you how don't long have did the trip take? What was it? Well, we didn't stop for We stopped twice. We stopped yeah. twice and made two uh, is it a transfer? What's it called the hitchhiking? Eat all the one same I eat. I don't know. Is that what it is? <laughs> is it like I don't I don't know if there is a specific is it like a word of phrase connecting one? hitchhike? Right, like I had to get my We did that hitchhike. twice. <laughs> okay. So whatever that is, you did it twice. We did that twice. Alright. So but in total, how how long how long did the trip take? 13, 14 hours? Wow. Wow. Just to get out of out of Birmingham and come on the show. 13, 14 hours. And those drivers, it's us. Yeah. yeah. Well, we had to stow away in the, in, the, in the trailers most of the time, but I mean, now we're the used to trailers down in Alabama, so. Sure. I mean, yeah. trailers are nothing new to us, let's yeah. face it. Yeah. I really shouldn't be laughing, but. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, how did you guys meet and, and form the Bus Buddies, this folk band? We met on the bus. We met on the city bus. <laughs> no, I was, I was driving. I was, I was working for the city of Birmingham, driving their public transportation. I was, you know, because I'm a naturally born leader, obviously. Yeah. I'm naturally at the helm driving the bus. Most bus drivers are naturally born leaders. Right. I mean, that's just true. Yeah. You know, uh, we won't go there. But, um, <laughs> okay. One morning, I'm, I'm make, doing my route, you yeah. know, and I see this little... Beautiful eyed monster sitting there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know a good looking man when I see one. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, I see I pull out the corner of the chimney loop. There he is standing there with his tuba saying, Hey, can I ride your bus? And I says, Well, if you got 36 cents, yeah, you can probably ride my bus. <laughs> it only costs 36 cents to ride the bus. Uh, I have to have 50 cents that day. Yeah. I could drive. He says, I would love to. <laughs> He says, wow. he, he says, I'd love to drive your bus. Well, I says, well, I legally can't leave this bus driver's seat. So uh, I just said, well, you sit on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> so here's how it looked. Here's how it looked a little bit like this. Wow. So I'm driving the bus like this, right? And he's using the pedals because I can't move my feet that much with this, with this big old yeah. pile of fun on me. <laughs> big, big old pile of fun, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean... So we're driving the bus kind of like tandem, and I says, hey, I says, hey, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know. He's sitting on your lap. You had not learned his name yet. <laughs> so what's the thing? He says, my name's Pete. Uh -huh. I said, nice to meet you, Pete. I see you got a tuba there. <laughs> yeah. Did you say anything? I said, this is a tuba, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah. are you laughing so that's, No, that's just this a very obvious response. Story. Like, sure, you're including every single line of dialogue that happened during this story. So basically, yeah. given my naturally born leadership skills and his tuba, we're going to make a band. I mean, that's just common sense. Right. It's inevitable. It's kind of like love in a way. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I see here that uh, your new album coming out uh, is called New America. Yep. Is that correct? Yeah. So what is, uh, what is the significance of that album title? Well, I mean, it's New America. New America. Can't get enough of it. Can't You've heard, heard of it. You heard New America? I can't, say, I can't say that I have heard of New America. <laughs> well, uh, how, do we, how, do you, how do you explain New America to someone that doesn't know what it is? How do I explain it to you? Because New America was something I came up with back in 2009. Okay. I created it. Right. And then I brought Pete in when he entered my life, fortunately. <laughs> so, 
So anyway, so what, so what exactly is, is this idea of New America? Like I said, it's kind of hard to Well, OK. So what's one thing you don't like about this America, this old America? Um, I, I don't know. I think the healthcare system. Oh, well, then you're in luck, because in New America, we don't have any health care. <laughs> Nothing to worry wow. about. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. I had some health care. What did you do with your health care? He threw it away. <laughs> he threw it away. Yeah. I sold my health care. I scrapped it. Really? <laughs> in New America, you can sell your, your health insurance. Yeah, you sell it. It's like a tuba. Yeah. You sell it scrap it. Yep. <laughs> wow. So how much money did you get from your health insurance? Oh, boy. Yeah. What did we buy with it? We bought like a six pack of beers. Uh, wow. Two, two cigarettes off the bomb. Two cigarettes off the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> wow, for your health insurance. Okay, so, <laughs> so I, okay, I, I guess that, that's something that can happen in New America. But, yeah. but what's really an idea of what New America really is? Well, it's kind of like, you know, we're reinventing folk music here with this okay. group. It's kind of like we just had to reinvent America. It's like we, we do what we want. I know what New York is like. Your shoe is going to explain. Yeah, that, oh, it's such a good, such a good metaphor. To, to be, uh, see these shoes? Like, I'm looking right. good right now. I'm looking yeah. super damn good right now. <laughs> like, I got my shoes. Yeah. It's like, I'm a professional right now. I'm uh -huh. here to sing a song on your show. Right. I'm here to, well, you know, we're just here to be musicians, you know. Yeah. But it's like, let's say tomorrow I wake up and I, I say, I'm not going to play Kirov's show tomorrow. I'm just going to do it tonight and that's it. So that's the great thing about these shoes. Right. Just like New America, like, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> New America's about doing what you want to do. When you want to do it. When you want to do it. Okay. So, so New America is an idea about doing what you want to do when you want to do it. Yeah, it's about being, being kick ass. Okay, so so anyway, uh, now you're going to perform a song for us yeah. here, and so this is the, uh, the the title track song from the uh, album New America. This is the song New America. Right, right, right. Oh, what? They're going to take a warm up through a cold. Yeah, you got some gum. Wow, it's, that's, that's what happens. What's he got? Keep things inside your wow. tuba. Wow, wow, that's a lot of spit in the tuba. <laughs> Of saliva. You know, it's New America. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's a juicy place, New America. It right. Really isn't juicy. <laughs> All right, so, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's the last time you know. Did you hide your, your fruit in there? <laughs> <laughs> it was born. All right, so why don't you guys, why don't you guys uh, show us what New America is here by performing the song. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, these are the Bus Buddies performing their single, New America. It's a little chilly in here, Andrew. I'm going to keep my shoes on. It's on. Are you sure it's on? Yeah. It's on. I am sure it's on. Trust me, it's on. Okay. Yeah. Waking up at the crack of noon. I ain't got nothing to do Put the sweatpants on, load the bong While somebody else writes the song <laughs> Supposed to work at 2 o'clock Don't think I'll punch in the clock Calling sick, I'm staying home Lock the doors and unplug the phone <laughs> That's new America to me America
New America, we got some new rules. New America, we got some new tools. The iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch. But if you're rich, they don't cost too much. America, yeah. That's New America to me. America. No chicks, just a bunch of dudes. That's when you realize we were screwed. None of the women were buying in, so in New America, we like men. <laughs> I'm sitting here with the man that I love. Man, he fits me like a glove. That's New America to me. You and me in New America, that's all you'll see in New America. You and me. What do you, you didn't, what do you, of course, you didn't know? What are you talking about? Are you gay for me? <laughs> <laughs> you can find your own way back to Alabama. Wait, you're leaving? Uh, How am I going to get back to Birmingham? <laughs> America. The Bus Buddies, everybody! I hate to leave you on that note. Uh, everybody, that just about does it for us here at Kira by Night. I'd like to thank some people for making this show possible. I'd like to thank all of my guests, Kate Horvath, Peter Pruitt, and the Bus Buddies for coming on and performing. I would like to thank the Underground for letting us do the show here. It's awesome that we get to do it here, huh? I'd like to thank the number one house band in Duluth, the By Night Orchestra, everybody. By Night Orchestra. And I would just like to thank all of you for coming here and enjoying the show. Thank you so much. This was Kira By Night. Thank you.